the liberty you have in Christ is that. But just be careful mm -hmm. that you're representing Christ in these situations. Mm -hmm. This is Ask Dr. E, where Dr. Michael Easley answers your biblical or theological questions in 10 minutes or less. Today's question is actually one of many that have come in uh, surrounding this topic. So this one comes from Craig. He said, Alistair Begg is in the headlines for his advice to a woman to attend her grandson's gay marriage ceremony. I've also heard one of your previous episodes on this subject. The issue has hit close to home with a brother-in-law who has chosen this lifestyle. A hypothetical marriage combined with Alistair Begg's advice made for an interesting Valentine's date conversation <laughs> with my wife. How do we juxtapose <laughs> how do we juxtapose attending in love with not compromising our faith? Thanks. Um, we talked a lot about this in recent weeks and whether to comment on this. And number one, Alistair is a friend. He's a brother. Yep. I know him. We have a good relationship, good friendship over the years. I trust Alistair. Um, I've exchanged private communication with him that obviously I'm not going to talk about here. Uh, that will remain private. And I listened very carefully to both the, uh, the comment he made and also his Sunday night service explaining it. And, uh, and that, then I interacted with him a couple of times, and I've texted him a few times. Um, his comment to the grandmother, I disagree with. What I would say is, and I don't, I don't think Alistair would agree with me, what I would say is it was a, it was a moment of extemporaneous empathy. Mm. He's hearing this question being read to him, and the, the part of him just kind of goes, oh, you know, it's a grandma. And I think that he, I don't think it was his script. Now he would probably say, or he may say, "No, I intended to say that." Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push back and say I think it was extemporaneous empathy. Then he got into a position, and this is where I love him like crazy. We still are friends, but I would not have handled it that way. Um, I want to go to the person's question specifically, um, but I also want to mention Alistair is a five-point Calvinist. Al Alistair is very orthodox. Mm -hmm. Alistair is down the line. Mm -hmm. And we don't agree on all those things, but we're still brothers. And I, again, I consider him a, a guy I would trust. Um, now, I want to go to the question that Craig asked because there's two things in here that he says juxtaposing, but there are two different issues. Um, attending in love. Um, is that in love mm -hmm. to go to the service? If, if I go to this, um, and, and that's where I would say, why? What are you communicating if you go? Mm -hmm. You're affirming. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I, I do agree with a lot of people that said you're giving affirmation to something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And let's step aside and say a, a monogamous, heterosexual, lifelong marriage between two believers is what we celebrate. That's yep. what we attend. That's yep. what we enjoy. Not all marriages you go to are going to fit that category. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to same-sex marriage or some other complications, um, then you have to ask and answer, you know, what am I communicating if people know my walk as a believer, mm -hmm. if I would go there and be part of that celebration? What if you're asked to be in the wedding? I mean, this is get very complex. So I don't think when he when Craig asked, attending in love, not compromising our faith, it isn't about compromising your faith. It's about do you right. affirm this or not? Now, let me add, and I think this is where um, – Personally, I would handle it very differently than, than Alistair. If I had a relationship with these people, the son, grandson, nephew, uh, in love, I would work on a very well-crafted card or letter, and I would say repeatedly, I love you, I mm -hmm. care about you deeply. Christ loves you, mm -hmm. he cares about you deeply. Mm -hmm. More importantly, what is your relationship with Christ? Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd love to be there in many ways, but I can't because the most loving thing I can do is tell you, you shouldn't be doing this. Mm. I'm still here, I'll still be your relative, whatever, but I don't think this is what God wants for you. Mm -hmm. And as lovingly, as, and it all depends on the relationship, right? If you don't know them totally. very well, right. you know, versus if it's a family member. And or if they're not a believer. Or all of the above. I, um, when you do that, yeah. understand that's gonna be misquoted, misappropriated yeah. taken out of context yeah. that's why i would i would write very carefully and i would think about it. i'd sit on it for a long time i have some people read it 
still going to be parsed and nuanced, mm-hmm. but that that to me would be the way I would love them. Mm-hmm. I love you enough to tell you Christ loves you, and this is not His plan. This mm-hmm. is not good. Now, will that break a relationship? Maybe. Yeah. But maybe one day, you know, they wake up and they right. go, "This isn't working. Right. I didn't know what this meant." Yeah. Christ still loves you. Mm-hmm. Christ still has a plan for you. Yeah. But we all have to come to that awareness that I stand before Christ not before an audience of people that may or may not affirm me. Yeah, I have two thoughts. I I think one, you know, I I feel for Alistair, and I think anytime situations like this, or it doesn't have to be about homosexuality, it could be anything in life, but it's like, give give me advice with a biblical foundation, and every situation is different. It's nuanced, people are different, and so even though we can, we can, have some biblical principles, you may advise people to do different things based on sure. so many different variables. So I think we just get in trouble when we answer questions like this because it's like it's not a one size fits all. Again, there, there are principles, yeah. but but anyway. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say is, you know, as you were talking about, you know, saying I love you so much, Christ loves you, and this is not what Christ has for you. This is not what Christ wants for you. It was making me think about some conversations I've had with some friends who were getting married in a heterosexual, <laughs> monogamous marriage, and I've said the same thing. Right. And so, you know, I mean, it's like, okay, in that situation, I love you so much, and I mean, I was I, I, there are weddings I've been in that I had before said, I love you. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you positive? Not because, and it's like the joke you know, that my like reputation is like, Hannah will always ask you before you walk down the aisle if you really want to do it. And, um, you know, sometimes I just think people, I won't just, everyone needs the permission to walk yeah. away if they need to walk away. I think that's important. But there have been times where I've asked very sincerely and even said not, not walking down the aisle, but the week of saying, yeah. I don't, as your friend who dearly loves you, I don't think this is yeah. what's best for you. And I will stand next to you and I will support you because I love you, but I want to make sure you hear that it. we've processed this. And 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 what happens is there it, it goes to pot. <laughs> yeah. You know, at some point and they come back and say I wish I would have listened. Yep. But but after experiencing that enough times, I decided I would rather someone say to me um I wish I would have listened to you than I wish you would have said something. True. And and that has guided a lot of decisions for me on I don't want a friend to look back and go, why didn't you say, say something. something to me? So we had the same experience, your mom and I, with a number of couples. And uh, one is a buddy of mine through seminary and uh, his first wife passed away and uh, he was getting remarried. And to quote him, you're the only one that told me not to do it. Yeah. And a year later, he's visiting me with his head in his hands, crying, wishing he'd never done it. Yeah. And I said, hey, I love you. You got to go forward with this. You mm-hmm. can't go backwards. And um, but to your point, you know, I, I guess is that a, is that a, a faithful are the wounds of a friend? Yeah. You know, that I, I'm willing. I love you enough to say this is wrong. Yeah. Christ loves you. Yeah. I don't have to be mad about it. I don't have to throw no. the so-called, you know, clobber verses, which is a very unfortunate use of the scripture in the sense that don't call them, it's the word of God. This is what scripture says. Mm -hmm. I don't have to throw that in front of them. They probably know that already. But to appeal from a loving posture, you need to repent. You need to come to Christ. You need to understand his plan for you. And then it goes back to a question we talked about in another recording, exchanging the truth of God for a lie. Mm -hmm. The incorruptible for the corruptible. And and when people do that, you don't want to be mad at them and throw rocks at them and get up and hackle them. Now, back to Alistair just for a moment. In his message, he did work very hard to say compassion was his motivation. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, I love him like crazy. I disagree with that being the overarching issue because to love is to be a truth teller, mm-hmm. not just nice about it. And I don't think that's, that's not, probably not a fair characterization, but my observation is you could have still been loving to this grandma. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a couple not long ago that her father divorced her mother years ago and decided to remarry a man in another state and they were grappling with taking their two daughters to attend the wedding Mm -hmm. and um you know Cindy and i told them our opinion they chose to go and support her father Mm -hmm. and his you know new husband whatever so it is you know the the liberty you have in christ is that but just be careful Mm -hmm. 
that you're representing Christ in these situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, would Christ be compassionate over truth? That's a that's a, a narrow. I mean, the woman at the well, he was very compassionate for, mm -hmm. but he also spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. So he didn't say it's okay, right, right. Go and sin no more, right. As a, often repeated. So anyway, right. all right. Well, if you've got a question for Doctor E, call us, text us, or email us. Ask Doctor E is produced by me, Hannah Seymour, mixed and mastered by Sonamorphic, and music composed by Jason Germain. <laughs>